Hey, welcome back. Back at the Tour de France, <clears throat> stage 14, and it's been a wild one so far. At the very least, go watch highlights if you haven't already watched the stage. But, um, yeah, I've seen things today that I've never seen before and have the paintings to prove it. <laughs> so it's now, even down to the peloton, isn't letting any break get away. So these two guys are off the front, but just barely. They've got roughly 20 seconds. You can't see the other guy yet, can you? <laughs> They've got roughly 20 seconds on a chase group of seven, but it's only another, well, uh, seven seconds to the main peloton with the... Uh, the group that's got the main leaders of the tour. So it's just been an aggressive day and an eventful day. And so. I'll get this one drawn out and then I'll talk about it. So you can see, I know where I'm going here. So I've started with this figure all the way to the left. <laughs> see, I don't know my right from my left, do I? Um, it's always been a problem. I blame theater since. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I've never known my right from my left. I just pretend it's theater that did it to me. Because, you know, nobody wants to admit they don't know their right from their left. When I grew up, when I was growing up, in the family car, must have been the whole family was uh, right left challenged because directions became mom's way, dad's way, because dad always drove. Mom was always in the passenger side, so dad's way, of course, would have been left since I'm in the U.S. <laughs> and uh, mom's way would have been right. And there's a whole bunch of other jokes in there, but I'm just going to let them lie. <laughs> so the other thing, so the early stage was plagued by a bit of rain, which kind of created the problems. And I'll allude to those or talk more about those in a minute. But um, now it's a hot, sunny, sticky day. They may be in the Alps, but they could just as easily be racing in Richmond, Virginia. So you can't really quite see, but this um, Ciccone here is being passed a bottle from neutral service. It's been another problem for the riders today is that their team cars, because the race is sort of spread out so much, can't get up. The peloton is too close to the brake, and then all the other guys behind the peloton are making it so the organizers won't let the cars get up to the peloton either because that would provide an advantage for those trying to get back they could you know chase back down so it's just been a race with things strewn all over the place so the only way for these riders to get any food or drinks is either pre-stationed soigneurs or neutral service. And there's several motorcycles in the race that will pass out water to anybody who needs it. And there's a Shimano has several um, support vehicles that have mechanics and bike parts and wheels and even a whole bikes if somebody should need it. If their team car is too far back, they can take that and then later switch that bike back to their own team car. And of course they give it back to Shimano. But So there's, you know, so it's been a rough day. So what happened today was there was a big crash and um, they neutralized the race. They stopped the race because it happened very early on. And they let the, all those who crashed, who could, get back 
to the front of the race and then they restarted the race. The race leader wasn't hurt or anything, but he, well, this is not the race leader. This is Tati Bagaccia, who's nine seconds back off the lead. And he's just sitting on, just trying to keep chill, trying to keep himself focused, waiting for the race to restart. Now, I'm now painting Giacconi, and Giacconi has been racing for the King of the Mountain points, and Nielsen just missed on this one, but then kind of blew up, and he's now off the back of the peloton, so it's going to remain to be seen whether he will still be wearing the jersey at the end of the day. So, eventful days all the way around. So this was sort of the composition I was shooting for. And you'll notice I never line things up in the center. It makes it more dynamic if it's pushed one way to the other. And with the, both of the riders sort of looking this direction, it pushes everything out to that side, which establishes a little bit of tension. One of the things is, what are they looking at? So in those of you who have commented, I appreciate it. It's really nice to know that I'm helping some of you all figure out how to paint the bike race. And good on you for trying. There are a couple of us that I'm aware of that do this. Um, as near as I can ascertain, I'm the only one who does multiple paintings every stage. I could be wrong, but I don't think so. That's what my father used to always say. I thought I was wrong once, but I was wrong. <laughs> he loved that joke. Very much a dad joke, right? <laughs> so now this is Chaconi working with Rusty Woods, Michael, but he goes by Rusty. Don't know why. <laughs> And Rusty has already won a stage, a very difficult stage up the Dome de Puy. So he's, I guess, well, that was nice. Let's do that again. So off the front, so these two have sort of had, I mean, Giacconi, I'm sure, would also love to win the stage, but these guys sort of have mutually beneficial objectives here. Chaconi is looking for mountain points and Woods is looking for the stage. And given the terrain yet to come, they can both get what they're looking for by helping each other. Although the Peloton, like I said, is not really letting anybody do anything today. I guess that means we can expect a very aggressive moves like we had at the very end of the stage yesterday from the two favorites. So that's my lightest warm tones. Now I'll move on to the red. There's a lot of talk about. So Chaconi runs for a team that used to, for the longest time they were co-sponsored it was Trek Segafredo, and Segafredo finally moved out of the sponsorship. And their new sponsor is Lidl, the grocery store. I'm gonna have to start shopping at Lidl. They've sponsored a lot of people, but they're really, so they changed their kit. And before the race started, a lot of people were like, not happy <laughs> with the new kit. I happen to love it. But then again, it's bright. It's colorful. So it's fun to paint. It's also primary colors. Primary colors being the colors you can't mix to get the color. And the colors that you use to mix to get everything else. So it is... Blue, red, and yellow. And even it's sort of a two-tone blue. Shorts being a bit darker than the jersey, but part of the jersey is dark too. 
and you see I'm not bothering to write the team name or anything on the jersey. One, the jersey is so distinctive. In my work, now there are others who are photorealists and put all the intense details, every little nuance, but that's not the work I'm doing. I'm looking more for the spirit, for the moment of the racing and the essence of what's happening. So I, but when you look at that kit, you know it's who it is. There's no doubt that this is Lidl Trek. And over here, Rusty Rides for Israel Premier Tech. And uh, also, I'm looking for the essence of the rider, the essence of the moment, and the essence of the kit, for that matter. But this, everybody knows who these, the kit is. And then based on riding style, most times you can tell who the rider is as well. So, that's sort of my decision-making process there. It's interesting that Chaconi has been riding the whole stage without his glasses on. I don't know if he just... took him off when it was raining and didn't want the water splashed in his face or couldn't see through the glasses when the water splashed in his face and just forgot. But he seems to always be squinting every time we see him too, so... I'm going for forgot that they're there. <laughs> so now we're just getting the, again, essence of the, um, grassy hillside behind the riders. And you can see that part of the way to get that is to, um, that's the closest you can get to a racing. So when you first put the color down, you can sort of, it's not where you wanted it, it went up on his arm. So I just sort of wiped it off as I, while it was still wet. And there, you can still see a little bit of it there, but it's not as um, distinctive. So part of the way to get, I'm using the brush to create the grass the blades of grass. So I've talked about that with like with the streets, the roadways, and you know your brush stroke helps give extra information to the painting. So if I went that way, it wouldn't have the same grass feel that it does when I go in these multiple vertical strokes. So now it's this area, which will be bright. So I'll get that laid in and then we'll go back to the darkest colors of the piece. And then I'm going to 
let this dry a little bit and I'll come back in and put in some more grat um, blades of grass or the gesture of the blades of grass. So now I want to get this the black in to sort of delineate the bicycles and such. And I say black, but of course I'm not using an ivory black. I'm mixing this vermilion color. I can't see it. And the dark green. And that gives me this nice attractive black color. So all really this left, well, I'm seeing I sort of missed bits of this glove. It's very colorful cycling gloves. It's interesting to notice that some riders don't wear cycling gloves. I've always worn them. I don't even feel comfortable on the bike without them. And I don't understand not wearing them in a race because if you go down and put your hand down, you don't have gloves on because the soles at least rather than being the um, lycra that the kits are there's actually some leather so when you put your hands down on the road when you're zooming along it can be very painful <laughs> so I just and then it's painful for a long time because you've got now road rash scraped off skin on your hand of course, that's where you're constantly making contact with your bike. So I haven't titled the piece yet, which I normally do before I start painting. Partially because now I've got wet paint stick here. Paint stick. That's a different media that I use. And there are videos about that. So I decided to call it mutually beneficial, going back to what I was talking about, that this effort is, their cross purposes may be mutually beneficial. Remind you that all of the cycling art does, so I only share one a day, but I do share one a day, so be sure to subscribe and follow so you can see those when they pop up. Um, I will load yesterday's painting here in just a bit of course by the time you see this it will have already loaded and then I'll follow it up with this one and um, but I'll but I paint multiple yesterday I think I painted eight the day before it was nine so you can go to my blog theartofcycling.blogspot.com and see all of the work there you can read about the paintings and how they factor into the race and then you will also find a direct link over to my website, gregleach.com, where you can purchase the artwork. And obviously, that's one way I can continue to do these is that I get the sales help, you know, the sales help, full stop. So thank you for taking the time to look. I really appreciate it. Again, leave a comment. Let me know what you think, what you'd like to know. And uh, if you're not already subscribing, please do. And a thumbs up never goes amiss. Thank you all.